Hello, class. Uh, so uh, before we get started, uh, I just want to say a few things. If you uh, can't hear me or are having trouble hearing me, uh, it is always helpful to use headphones or earbuds. Um, so make sure you use those. Um, if you're still having problems, please email or message me. Um, and let's see, uh, the way that I do these online e-class lessons is I run them very similar to how I would run them in class, so it should feel like a normal class. Uh, however, uh, you might find it helpful to do this lesson with another student. So. Okay, sorry, I thought my computer was frozen. Uh, you would probably find it helpful to do this with another student. So I would suggest that if you can, if you can meet your classmate, you can do that and, and watch the videos together. Or uh, if you want, you can use Kakao or email or SMS and, and message each other or, or chat or chat on the phone with each other uh, while you're doing the lesson so you can help each other out and and do work do the problems and or answer the questions together um, also uh, i will be putting this ppt on eclass so uh, you can get all of the information there and uh, the last thing is that when you watch these videos on eclass uh, you must not uh, move forward in the video or make the video go faster. If you do that, then eClass uh, will mark you as not uh, watching the video correctly and you will get marked as not attending class, okay? So just make sure you watch it correctly so that I can give you attendance points, okay? so. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so we, we've we already discussed uh, simple sentences and compound sentences. And sorry, I'm gonna turn off my phone sound. Okay. We've already discussed uh, independent clause, or sorry, simple sentences and compound sentences. Uh, so when we talked about compound sentences, we said that uh, uh, a compound sentence is like two simple sentences put together or two independent clauses put together. So if we remember, an independent clause is a complete thought. So it, that means it has a subject uh, and a predicate. Uh, so in this sentence, the predicate starts with one, the verb, one. So this means it's a full sentence, it can stand alone, it doesn't need more information. So um, if you add a period or a full stop like this one, uh, this becomes, uh, this independent clause becomes a simple sentence. Uh, a dependent clause is only part of a sentence. It is not a complete thought. Uh, it needs more information. So we have this example here. It says, even though they only scored 75 points. Um, so if we look at this, um, it looks like a sentence. There's a subject, they, and, and the predicate. Well, this predicate starts with the adverb only. But remember, predicates usually start with a verb, but may start with an adverb, okay? Like only, uh, frequently, quickly, something like that. Uh, so take a moment and just think, why is this wrong? Why is this wrong? So I'll give you about 30 seconds to think about this.
All right, so that's probably about enough time. So the problem here is this, oops. The problem is this even though, uh, we can't add a full stop here because, because this even though is basically telling us we need more information. If we just said they only scored 75 points, that's all the information we need. But because of this even though, this phrase, even though, we can't add a full stop. We can't make this a sentence. So to fix this, we need to add an independent clause, uh, like the one we saw before. So uh, you can see we have it here. We started with the independent clause. Manchester United won the EPL in 1997. And then we add the dependent clause even though they only scored 75 points. So this is a full sentence. Now we can add the uh, full stop. And, and this even though, it's, it's in the middle of the sentence, but uh, the extra information comes first, right? It's in this independent clause. So uh, we can think of this as being similar to a fanboys, right? Um, also, um, this is also really important to remember. When the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, you need to use a comma like right here. So just remember, dependent first, comma, compl uh, independent second, right? And this makes us our complex sentence. So take a look at this sentence. These are actually two clauses, right? These are two clauses, uh, dependent and independent. Do we need a comma? I'm gonna give you just 30 seconds to think about this. All right, so the answer is, oops, yes, we do need a comma, right? Uh, because the dependent clause comes first. And if we look at this one, we do not use a comma. We do not use a comma because the independent clause comes first. So it's, it's a little strange, it's a little confusing. And it's funny because we can think of this until or even though we can think of them as fanboys. And usually when we have a fanboys like but, and, or, for, yet, so, when we have those, we put a comma here. But it's only when the uh, this word comes first. So even though or until, when that comes at the beginning of a sentence, then we need to use a comma. All right, so we've learned about simple sentences, uh, like it was raining. We learned about compound sentences. It was raining, so I took the bus. Uh, and then we also learned about, comp we just now learned about complex sentences. Uh, when I took the bus, it was raining. So here's a very good example. Uh, we have the compound sentence with the fanboys so, so it's comma, so. And in the complex sentence, the sentence starts with when. So this is one of those words like when, uh, even though, until, right? When it starts the sentence, we need to add the comma. So I guess uh, the way we can think about it is complex. The word complex makes it more, it's kind of like more difficult, right? So it seems more difficult to remember that when it's at the beginning, when the dependent clause is first, we need the comma. With a compound sentence, remember we're just we're just adding, right? Compound just means add, or or putting uh, putting things together. So uh, this is one sentence, simple sentence. This is one independent clause, and then we use the compound or the conjunction or the fanboys to make the compound. This is like a, this is like glue, right? In our in our sentence. And then we add a simple sentence or another independent clause, right? Okay. So if you use these types of words at the start of a sentence, 
then you will make what's called a dependent clause. So we've already seen uh, until and whereas even though and when uh, there is many there are many more words, but these are some of the most common words and phrases that you would see at the beginning of a complex sentence. These are called subordinating conjunctions. You don't need to know this. Um, I haven't. I don't have a special name. So, so for words like for, uh, or, or sorry, for and, uh, nor, uh, but or, uh, yet and so. In our class, we call them fanboys. Their real name is, uh, I think, uh, well, I just call them conjunctions. Uh, I don't know if they're it's a specific name, but uh, they're similar to these kinds of conjunctions. So conjunctions are just kind of what we use to put sentences together, okay? So you just need to remember, you, I wouldn't say you need to remember all of these. Um, some of them are very common, like because and however, where's however? I don't have however in here. Okay, I thought I had however. So some of these are very common. Um, um, so I would say those are probably the most, and some of them are very similar, like even though is quite similar to that. It's pretty much the same as though, which is quite similar to although. Well, there's a little difference there actually, but uh, just be, uh, I'm not gonna ask you to know all of these on the test, but you should be ready. You should know how to use them. That's the most important part. All right, so, uh, last time we made simple sentences uh, and then and then we made compound sentences. Today I'm going to ask you to write on a piece of paper three dependent clauses. So when you do this, I'm going to make sure I want to, well, I don't want to break my computer here. So every time I use this writing tool, it breaks my computer. But uh, what I want you to do is make make three dependent clauses. Okay, so you're, these are like simple sentences. But they will start with subordinating oops, conjunctions. Okay, so for example, uh, okay, so something like this, this is my example. And in my example, oh no. So in my example, oh no. I need to pause. Okay, class, uh, so I'm gonna have to do this a little strange. Uh, every time I use the, the writing tool on, on Zoom, it kind of crashes my computer. So I'm just gonna leave the, the little guide here on the left side. And I'm gonna give you, oops, I'm gonna give you six minutes to make your make your example like I did. It says though I'm tired of eating, so I used though. And your topic can be anything, okay? You can be any topic. Last time we did lunch and hobbies, your topic can be any, okay? So I'll give you six minutes. Uh, make that actually five minutes. Ready? Three, two, one, go.
Okay, class. So hopefully uh, you got your sentences made. And the next thing that you should do, if, you, if you're doing this with another classmate, uh, it will help. It, it, it'll be much more, uh, it'll be a much better experience if you do this with another classmate. Um, you should give the dependent clauses that you just wrote, uh, send those to your partner or give those to your partner. And then you will take their dependent clauses and add three independent clauses uh, to make complex sentences. So uh, remember, since you start with the dependent clause, since we start with this, you'll need to add a comma and then the independent clause. Uh, if you're just doing this alone, you can just use your own sentences or you can use your own dependent clauses. I'm gonna give you uh, about three and a half minutes to work on this. Uh, so ready, three, two, one. Go. Okay, class, hopefully that's enough time. And it's good to keep these sentences so that you have examples to look at. Um, uh, hopefully you were able to make the three complex sentences. Um, and obviously when you finish, just give back your, get your original sentences back, okay? Um, so many teachers will tell students, uh, to just write long sentences. Now, I have a problem with this, telling students to just write long sentences. And there are two reasons uh, that I think you should not, or that you should, not, yeah, I, I think there are two reasons that you should not just write long sentences. Um, only writing long sentences will actually ruin the rhythm or the pace of a writing. Um, and I'm gonna explain this a little bit more in just a second. But also another reason is that simple sentences can help you become a better writer and avoid making mistakes. 
Okay, so first I want to talk about this idea of, of rhythm or pace in your writing. Um, so good writing is like good music. It changes to keep the reader interested. It goes faster, slower, gets higher, louder, softer. Uh, so it's, it's always changing. Like, like if you just listen to a song that has like this beat, it gets kind of boring because it's the same beat. But when they change the beat, I'm not good at music, but I hope that I hope you could hear that and understand that. But it's the sound of the clapping. When it changes, it becomes more interesting. So our our writing can have that same feeling, uh, or we can we can actually show feelings or style, uh, just like we can when we speak. Um, uh, so a way to understand this is. Um, I have one example of how, how we can use uh, simple sentences to change the pace of the writing and also emphasize a point. So make a point stronger or make an idea stronger. So I have this example sentence. It says, since most people eat bread, it must be healthy. This is not true. So this sentence right here is a simple sentence, very short, but it's very good because it changes the pace. It has a very strong feeling and, and it's giving us uh, the information as quickly as possible. Uh, and, and so this is why we wanna use simple sentences and compound and complex sentences so that we have style, our writing has style or has a, yeah, yeah, has a style. Uh, now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is that how simple sentences can help you just be a better writer and, and make less or fewer mistakes. Um, so my tip is that when you do a writing assignment for this class or, or any kind of writing assignment in English, don't write a lot of complex and compound sentences. Here's what you should do. You should find out the total number of sentences. So find out what the total is and then write 1.5 times or one and a half time times the total number. So for example, if I give you an assignment where you have to write uh, 10 sentences, you should write 15 simple sentences. And I know this sounds strange, but I will explain what this means. So after you make those 15 sentence, simple sentences, you should then go back through the writing and erase some of the end marks and add fanboys or subordinating conjunctions, okay? So um, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Uh, you are going to, on your paper, uh, you're gonna make five simple sentences about the topic part-time jobs, okay? So I have an example here. Um, to show you, but when you do this, don't make a list of sentences. Make sentences that are connected to the uh, topic, connected to the topic of part-time jobs. So I have my example here. Many university students work at a convenience store. It may be their first part-time job. It can be easy work. It can also be boring. They usually learn a, a lot about life and work. So that's five simple sentences, right? So we can say subject, predicate. Subject it may be their first part-time job, predicate. Subject it, predicate can be easy work. Subject it, predicate can also be boring. Subject they, predicate usually learn a lot about life and work. Okay, five simple sentences. I'm going to give you uh, about eight minutes to work on this. So ready, three, two, one, go.
Okay, class. So hopefully that's been enough time. Um, and hopefully you got something like this, something similar. Hopefully you didn't just copy. Um, so now, the next thing I want you to do is erase two end marks, two dots, two periods, and put together one sentence with fanboys. So you have to pick which one. And one sentence with a subordinating conjunction, like as, because, although, something like that. Um, and I'm just going to give you um, one minute to work on this. And I'm going to actually go back and show you the list. Well, I'll leave this up. Okay, so hopefully you got something. Um, so here's my example again. So I just changed it to many university students work at a convenience store, comma, yet. So use the yet. It may be their first part-time job. It can be easy work. However, it can also be boring. They usually learn a lot about life and work. So um, as you can see, this uh, this writing has a compound sentence, a complex sentence, and a simple sentence. Um, it's very simple. And by making all these simple sentences first, I was able to uh, make very simple, or <laughs> by making these simple sentences, I could avoid making mistakes, right? Because I can see subject, predicate, subject, predicate, subject, predicate subject, predicate, subject, predicate, right? It's very simple this way. Then I don't have to remember, like I don't have to think, oh, this needs to be a big sentence right here. I can come back later and I can fix it by adding the, uh, the fanboys and subordinating conjunctions, okay? So um, yeah, so by following this, process, you know, writing these simple sentences first, you avoid making mistakes, be able to write quicker, have clearer writings, create rhythm in your writing, and add feeling, like emphasis. All right, so um, we are finished, and if you have any questions about any of this, you can always email or message me. Bye-bye, class.